guys, using AE here, and I'm coming up with tutorial number 51 over a flare and like manually tracking it. You don't have to manually track it, but some cases it's better, some cases it's not. Um, let me tune this down so that we don't have the problem like how we did yesterday with the. Uh, might make a difference. Hopefully, this will sound a little softer for you guys. Um, also, I'm really surprised we broke 50 likes in the first day. That was I wasn't expecting that at all. So, um, uh, thanks for that. I think we're at like 56, 55 right now. But let me show you what we're gonna be doing today. You see that flare going around the gun? Yeah, the goon. It's pretty cool. So what we're gonna do for this is I'm gonna go right when I want the flare to start. I want it to start right here, same spot. So what we're gonna wanna do is we wanna have optical flares again, and we're gonna go to layer, new, and it can be either an adjustment layer or a solid. I'll pick a solid. I'm gonna drag it below my color correction, and I'm gonna split it right when I want it to begin. And so, yeah, it's black right now, but add an optical flare. And then it'll change the render mode to on transparent. And there it is. And then we're going to change the XY right here. But first, what we're going to want to do is click options, and you'll have this thing come up. Um, I'll delete all of this. And I'm going to show you what we're going to make. So you want to go to your lens objects and click glow and spike ball. Uh, you can you don't have to use spike ball. You can use that, but I just prefer spike ball. So glint, a glint is a little too much for me. And you also find your hoop, your uh, ring, hoop stuff like that in here. But um. What we're gonna want to do, or what I'm gonna want to do, is I'm gonna take the glow and I'm gonna add a gradient. And what this will do is um, let's make a red gradient, like how I actually let's make a fuck red, blue. Yeah, and so what this will do is it'll have kind of a what you might call it. It'll have blue, and then it'll have your first gradient color. You can change it. I like white, so I'll keep it at white, and then I'll keep going blue, white. And you can change that with the gradient loops. So I'll bring it gradient loops down. See at point three, you can pretty much only see blue. But I want it to be like that. That seems about right. Point nine, it's good. And gradient offset, it just changes what the inner color will be. Uh, I want the inner color to be white. There we go. And then you can also change this but I don't want to. So click OK and then you got that and that thing it looks disgusting. I'm going to tone down the 80. It looks disgustingly dirty. Uh, let's, what happens? Yeah, let's rotate it a bit. 30. So it kind of matches up with our scope. And that looks good for now. I'm going to transition it in though. So I'm going to have it at like 150 at the brightness, or actually I'm going to have it at like 180. Go something crazy. I'll go like 18 frames forward and tone it down to like 90. 90 seems good. So it kind of transitioned itself, itself in. And... Uh, yeah, so we finished making the flare. Um, you can also change the color here. Don't like that though. Uh, I'm gonna make it 3D, and you can track it as well, but I don't want to track it. And I'm gonna bring up. Uh, I'm actually gonna make a set a keyframe for position X Y. Open this up by clicking U, and I'm actually. What else? I'm gonna bring up my rotation too. Sorry, and I'm gonna track it. Right now it's at one twigster, so I don't need to do that much work. So right about here, I'm going to change the position up to 
kind of hard to see. Hold up. Let me disable this. I think I might be moving it a little much. Shouldn't matter too much though. If you really, if you truly care about like having it perfect, then I recommend that you track uh track it like with camera tracker. I have a tutorial on that. Can you believe it? Tutorial number fifty one. All right, so we pretty much tracked it here. Uh, go one frame forward. It changes big time. So let's see. I'm kind of at the top. So I'm going to want to bring this up a bit, like that, go up again, right here, and then right when he shoots, I'm going to split and delete. But also, I want to change the scale up a bit, so right here, hold up, scale should be here it's getting a little further away throughout the entire clip so I'm gonna make the scale go from 80 to 78 or 70 something a little more noticeable 75 and then go another frame forward changes to 74 or 72 another frame forward bring it to 70 and then right when he shoots it goes away so yeah, um, what this should look like um, now, and also your color correction will alter it greatly. So uh, pick your color correction wisely. Uh, I picked a really clean one so it didn't do too much. That looks pretty sick in my opinion. Um, might be doing this a little more often now, but you don't have to track it to the scope, you can track it to the sky. Like let's say he's about to do a no scope across a map, you can have this, you can like put this on the window or something across a map and make it resemble like a little glow or anything. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. And also, real quick, you can go to Twitch, bring Twitch in, drag it over here, and you can mess with the lighting, enable light, I think my parents are going to get home soon. So I don't like doing tutorials when my parents are home. So bring the light to about 4, bring the amount to like 20, and go to operator controls, light, bring the twitches to 2, and bring the light amount to 25. And then what this will look like is if we ran previewed again. It kind of twitches the light and it looks really cool. It adds that extra pizzazz to it and kind of animates the flare. So, guys, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, tutorial number 51. Um, so I have one more day left to school, so I'm really happy. Um, he's been using AE, and I'm out. Peace.